The Inspector General of Police, Kayode Adeolu Egbetokun, has summoned a meeting with the force management team and tactical squads to address the escalating concerns regarding insecurity across the country. According to a statement by Force Public Relations Officer ACP Muyua Adejobi, the IGP, while expressing deep concern over the events, emphasized the need for decisive action. Adejobi noted that at the meeting, which centers on a comprehensive review of current security challenges, strategic planning and the deployment of tactical resources to tackle emerging threats, the IGP emphasized the need for a coordinated and intelligence-driven approach to address the evolving security landscape. Tactical squads were briefed and directed to intensify efforts on the deployment of proactive measures to prevent criminal activities and protect citizens. While reassuring Nigerians, especially residents of the Federal Capital Territory, of improved security, the IGP ordered the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Department of Operations, to personally coordinate the upscaled security strategies and placed to decimate kidnappers and other criminally minded individuals in the FCT and immediately restore normalcy. More on security updates, uh, armed bandits have launched a devastating attack on Magizawa village in Zamfara state, kidnapping around 50 villagers, including 36 women, while tragically claiming three lives, including a vigilante group member. The assailants, arriving at night, created chaos by firing shots and conducting house-to-house -house searches for victims. Residents suspect possible informants aiding the bandits, leading to the surprise attack, catching the vigilante group off guard. Authorities, including the sole administrator of Kaura Namoda and the police public relations officer, are yet to provide details or comments on the incident. Redirecting inquiries to the Operation Hader in Daji, the affected families have not received any ransom demands yet. Gunmen suspected to be bandits have kidnapped two female students of Al Kalam University, Kasana State. The victims were abducted in Niger State on their way back from school on Monday, January 15. The president of the National Association of Niger State Students, Gambo Idris Shehu, confirmed the incident in a statement signed by the Secretary General, Mohamed Ibrahim. The victims, both from Borugu local government area, are Habiba Ango Shantali, a 200-level student from Political Science Department, and Mariam Abubakar Musa, a 400-level student from the Department of Microbiology. We're bringing now to the FCT, where the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyeson Wike, has berated FCT Area Council Chairman for abandoning their responsibilities. The minister made his feeling known while addressing a stakeholders emergency security meeting, adding that council chairmen have neglected their duties by traveling out of the country in light of existing challenges. Wike decried a situation where council chairmen travel anytime and then blame the FCT minister when things go wrong. He recalled the recent strike by the Nigeria Union of Teachers, noting that even when primary schools are under area councils, chairmen were not doing enough to address issues that led to the strike. Now, seven people on Tuesday reportedly lost their lives in a multiple road crash on the dual carriage bypass ring road in Oshogbo, the Oshun state capital. The, the accident involved a blue Mazda ES300 commercial bus, a yellow, a yellow tricycle and a green Bajaj Boxer motorcycle. Men of the Oshun State Sector Command of the Federal Road Safety Corps, policemen and other emergency responders rushed to the injured, rushed the injured, I beg your pardon, to a hospital and evacuated 
the vehicles from the road. The Public Enlightenment Officer for FRSC, Agnes Ogungbemi, confirmed that seven people died in the accident, including four males and three females. Ogungbemi said speed violation was the likely cause of the accident and cautioned drivers against excessive speeding. The vehicles and the motorcycle involved were taken to the Dubai Divisional Police Headquarters. Now away from Oshun State, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appeal filed by David on Bugadu of the People's Democratic Party challenging the election of Nasarawa State Governor Abdullahi Suley. On Tuesday, the court, presided over by Justice Kudirat Kekere Ekum, reserved the judgments to a date to be communicated to the parties after counsels to the appellants and respondents adopted their briefs of argument. The Apex Court also reserved judgment in the appeal filed by Major General Aminu Bande, the PDP governorship candidate in Kebi State, challenging the election of Nasser Idris of the APC as the governor of the state. Last year, the Independent National Electoral Commission declared Sule the winner of the March 18 governorship election. Dissatisfied with the election outcome, the PDP candidate approached the governorship election petition tribunal, challenging INEX declaration of Sule as the winner of the poll. About seven months later, Ambugadu got judgment in his favor on October 2, as the tribunal nullified Sule's election and declared him as the winner of the March 18, 2023 governorship election in the state. Sule, who was displeased with the tribunal ruling, appealed, to, appealed the verdict at the Court of Appeal in Abuja and secured the nod of the appellate before Umbugadu proceeded to the Supreme Court. Amidst rising economic challenges occasioned by fuel subsidy removal, casino residents are resorting to ancient ways of transporting goods and services. The residents who are mostly low-income earners are taking drastic decisions to cut costs and reduce the burdens and pressures of costs of living. Abdullahi Yamadi completes this report. Many Katsina residents have been forced to choose the lowest among their preferences as the priority now is food. This ox cart is now used in conveying bride's furniture to the matrimonial homes in Katsina City, abandoning trucks or vans which are even faster. Since the full subsidy removal by President Bola Ahmad Tinibu some month ago, Business is no longer as usual to many Kasana residents, hence the decision to devise these ways. Though people are not happy with the new development, but there is nothing they could do as it is the last resort for them to avoid the risk of falling into a deep economic ditch. Many low-income owners in Kasana look up to us to transport their goods and services because they cannot afford to employ the services of vehicles or fueling their vehicles. At the moment, these people use donkeys to supply sand for building houses and other structures instead of hiring tippers that charge high amounts of money since the full subsidy removal. This is a happy moment for these people as they make huge amount of money daily from the business which before now is on the verge of going extinct all to complement their means of livelihood. Before the removal of first subsidy, the business died a natural death. But now, people hire us to supply sand and other building materials for them with these donkeys, which is cheaper. I hardly get 500 naira before as each trip cost 200 naira, which was 50 naira before. This action has further raised the cost of donkeys at the markets, observers assert, calling on President Tinubu-led federal government 
to initiate programs and policies that could ameliorate the difficulty facing Nigerians in making their end meet. In the same vein, many civil servants like Haliru Nuhu and this trader, Habibu Musa, who were using motorcycles to and from their places of work, have been forced to abandon motorcycles for bicycles and they can no longer buy fuel to power them. I cannot afford 1,000 Naira to buy fuel for my motorcycle on daily basis. From my house to my place of work is about 9 kilometers. But now I use this bicycle and I take advantage of it to exercise my body to keep fit. Public commentators believed that the harsh economic predicament speaks for itself and apparently appears on the faces of majority of Nigerians, meaning that the peak of poverty is here and the earlier the government take measures to ameliorate the hardship, the better for all. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. Residents of Yenagoa, the Bayelsa state capital, have called on the federal government to fix and put into use all refineries in the country. The residents believe this will ensure a significant reduction in the price of petrol, which will affect the rising cost of living, negatively impacting millions of Nigerians. Trustee Viz Friday Ebimoboe Peter has more. For some of the residents, life has become a living hell for many Nigerians due to the removal of subsidy on petrol, which brought about an astronomical surge in prices of commodities. To them, fixing refineries will lead to a reduction in the price of fuel, which will in turn make life a bit bearable for Nigerians. It is the subsidy that increase the high cost of fuel. If I'm not mistaken, they should keep the re re refinery in order, uh, renovate them, keep them in order, so that by re refining our crude, it will bring down the high cost of fuel in our country. Well, I say I'm the person that is most affected here because as you can see in my beers, I used to shave two times or three times in a week, but now I could not even shave again. This is almost like two weeks now I've not been able to shave because of high cost of uh, fuel and it has affected the, the, the barbers to the extent that we used to shave with 200, but now it's almost 500 per shave. And I'm on my way to Portacon. The last time I... I, I uh, bothered the taxi to Portaco, I paid one five, but now they are telling me 3,500 naira. See, so it's affecting every area of the economy. So the government really needs to do something about it. In some um, developed countries, if they want to do this kind of thing, they have there, there are some remedies, there are some things they, they put in place to, to ensure that they, 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 they curtail this hardship. So that's what the, co the government needed to do. That's For evangelist Banaman, Timitu Lai Biowe, the only way out of the present hardship occasioned by the subsidy removal is a peaceful revolution. Um, for now, I'm not seeing any possible sol solution. Because the wicked have taken over this country. Wicked people that don't have the people at heart. They are not patriotic. And so, when the people are crying, they get happy more. They rejoice the more. So the fuel cannot come down. Fuel will be going higher and higher. And as fuel goes higher, it affects everything. Everything will go higher and higher. So the only solution now is revolution. The people should come out and say no more for these wicked people. And the Bible said, when the righteous rule, the people will rejoice. With the Dangote refinery coming on board, as well as the NNPCL calling for expression of interest, EOSI, from qualified oil and gas firms to operate and maintain the Portacot refinery, many Nigerians are hopeful that things will turn around in no distant future. From Yenagua, Friday, Ibimobo with Peter. Cross TV News, Yenagua. This is the news update on Trust TV, coming up after the break. Balchi sugarcane sellers plagued to observe basic hygiene rules. 
More news when we return. Do stay with us. Join us for the 21st Daily Trust Dialogue and presentation of the 2023 African of the Year. This year's theme, Tinubu's Economic Reforms, Gainers and Losers, will be chaired by Dr. Shamsuddin Usman, former Minister of National Planning, guest speakers Wale Edun, Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Dr. Victoria Akai, Immediate Past Director General, Abuja Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Comrade Joe Ajero, President, Nigeria Labour Congress. This event takes place at NAF Conference Center and Suites, Kado Expressway, Abuja, on Thursday, 25th of January, 2024, 10 a.m. Attendance is free, and you can watch the live broadcast on Star Times, Channel 164, or NICOMSAT Free to Air. For sponsorship, branding, and participation, please contact 081-5176-4600 or 080-3392-8902. Don't miss this insightful dialogue shaping the economic landscape in Nigeria. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying. But if you're just joining us, this is a Trust TV News update. Now let's take a look at a recap of some of our top stories. <laughs> You heard that IGP summons task force, tactical squad commanders over killings, kidnappings. Plus, seven die in a Shogbo road crash. And now moving on to other stories. The Association of Sugarcane Sellers in Bolchi State have assured of its determination to adhere to basic hygiene rules in the operational basis to improve public health in their communities. They gave the assurance during an on-the-spot visit to sugarcane markets by environmental protection experts in the state. Trustee Viz Adamu Imam files in this report. In an effort to improve public health and promote hygiene, the Bauchi State Environmental Protection Agency issued a four-point guideline to sugarcane sailors within the metropolis. Although the leadership of the association expressed concern over the matter, it however said the visit is timely. <laughs> With over 4,000 members across the state, we usually receive 10 trailers of sugarcane every day. With this volume of sugarcane, it is natural to generate waste, so we are assuring them of compliance by our members to the guidelines for environmental sanitation. <laughs> As an association, we always sue for collaboration among members in terms of keeping the environment clean because it is for the benefit of all. In the whole Bauchi state, no market attracts the kind of patronage that sugarcane market attracts. Thousands of youths come here for, to partake in our business. Some even come directly from school. That is why we need the presence of government at this market. We will do more if government consider our business as an important aspect of the day-to-day -day life, the society, in terms of sanitation. We adhere to whatever our leaders tell us to do. We don't have a problem with that, despite our number. The director of the agency emphasized the need for environmental sanitation and hygiene, adding that the guidelines were designed with the view to promote public health and ensure that vendors create more value to the business, not only in the metropolis, but across the state. And we explained to them the modalities. And of course, they appreciate that. And at the same time, the water that they are using and the container, you know, uh, for carrying the water, you know, to water the sugarcane and, wa and wash it at the same time, uh, we realize that it's not that clean enough. So we engage them uh, to see that at least they have the clean container and clean water uh, for processing and also ocean of the sugarcane. These are some of the things that we have discussed with them. And our plan, we want to go beyond that. And uh, you had them, you know, uh, making their request to the government particularly having a public toilet there, which is paramount, and at the same time, uh, water source in the area, which we promise that we'll take it on, we'll inform the government. It's not our responsibility to provide the water, but it's Pacifica's responsibility to uh, provide the uh, you know, public toilet facility. He also wants sugarcane vendors to move with basket to enable them properly dispose waste at designated collection centers 
along major roads across the state. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Fitch Ratings has placed Union Bank of Nigeria PLC's issuer default ratings, viability rating and national ratings on rating watch negative. The RWN follows the Central Bank of Nigeria's announcement on 10 January that it had dissolved the board and management of three Nigerian banks, including UBN, as a result of regulatory non-compliance, corporate governance failure, disregarding the conditions under which banking licenses were granted and involvement in activities that pose a threat to financial stability, among other infractions. The CBN has since appointed new executives, including chief executive officers, to oversee the affairs of the banks. Fitch experts, Fitch expects to resolve the RWN within six months once there is more certainty regarding the CBN's intervention and implications for UBN's standalone credit profile. The ratings could be affirmed and removed from RWN if UBN continues to operate as normal under the new management in the medium term with no additional regulatory interventions or financial profile implications from the management replacement. And now to health matters. The World Health Organization says COVID-19 vaccines have saved no fewer than 1.4 million lives in Europe. The WHO European region, which covers 53 countries including those of Central Asia, has registered more than 277.7 million cases of COVID-19 and more than 2.2 million deaths, according to the organization's most recent data from December 19, 2023. According to WHO's Europe Regional Director Hans Kluge, the first booster doses alone saved an estimated 700,000 lives, Kluge said. It was essential for people to protect themselves, especially those most vulnerable during the winter. He noted that as the world learns to live with COVID-19 and other respiratory viruses, it has become vital for vulnerable populations to stay up to date with their COVID-19 and influenza vaccinations as recommended. Away from Nigeria, Kenyan prosecutors on Tuesday said they intend to charge a suspected cult leader and dozens of other suspects with murder and terrorism over the death of more than 400 of his followers after a court warned it may have to free him. Self-proclaimed pastor Paul Nthenge Makenzi is alleged to have incited his followers to starve to death to meet Jesus in a case that shocked the world. Mackenzie was arrested in April last year after bodies were discovered in a forest near the Indian Ocean coast. His pre-trial detention has been extended on several occasions as investigations draw out. Upon thorough analysis of the evidence, the Director of Public Prosecutions is satisfied that there is sufficient evidence to prosecute 95 suspects the DPP's office said. The move comes a week after a court gave authorities 14 days to prosecute the former taxi driver or release him. Mackenzie and his co-accused will face 10 charges including murder, manslaughter and terrorism. It was not immediately clear when the 95 suspects would appear in court, but prosecutors say they undertook to prosecute the martyrs expeditiously and in sports following the axing of portuguese coach jose marinho in the early hours of tuesday roma have appointed former club player daniel de rossi as new manager the contract is for a six-month deal valid until june 2024 with option to extend Jose Marinho was sacked after two and a half years in charge at Roma. The Galerosi have won only one 
out of their last six Serie A games and were recently knocked out of the Coppa Italia by city rivals Lazio, where Mourinho was sent off. With that, we've come to the end of the news update at this hour. But remember, you can always follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream for more news, programs and documentary. I am Aisha Salihu. Thank you so much for watching.